And that's not okay. Well, this is Grandpa Frank again, and we're here for part three of uh, Jehoshaphat, the story of Jehoshaphat. So in the beginning, this we're in chapter the Second Chronicles, uh, chapter twenty. And the question is, well, what happens? What do you do when when bad news arrives? And we're looking at the life of King Jehoshaphat. Well, we got three kings here in the beginning of the story. Three kings, three enemies have chosen to come and uh, attack Israel. Or rather, I should say the kingdom of Judah. Because uh, Jehoshaphat is the king of the southern kingdom of Judah. Yeah. And so what he decides to do is he decides to humble himself. And he comes to God. And, he's, and he goes to the temple, he draws the people together, and in front of the people, he cries out to God. He cries out a prayer of remembrance. Remember, O Lord, your promise. Remember, O Lord, what you promised to do for us. So we are here, we are coming to you, and we are asking for help. We are asking you, Lord. To come and, and, and help us with the situation because we can't. There's absolutely no way they're outnumbered. They're totally um, no way that they can. I mean, they could probably fight, but can they win? It's a totally hopeless situation. So let's move on down here. And I, I like, I'm going to go back to verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with, the, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. So everybody was there. It was a church meeting. Everybody was in prayer. And sometimes we wonder when we pray, you know, are our prayers heard? Do our prayers go beyond the ceiling? And, you know, they really don't have to go very far past our lips. Because God does hear. He hears our prayers. Especially when there's a group like this and we're all praying in one accord. In one accord. So what happens is unique, you know. Sometimes, when 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 there's when there's a need for prayer, you know, when you when you're in a tough situation, you know, and and it's hard, it's hard to pray. It's hard because you don't know what to pray or what to say, but there's a struggle within your spirit, and you just pray. And and, and sometimes you don't even know if if. Um, the words if, if your prayers are being heard but you know what's so cool especially in the church situation you know when you're sharing your challenges with with uh, other brothers and sisters in the Lord is that somebody sometimes they'll come and they'll bring you a word of encouragement sometimes it's in in the message that the pastor speaks on the Sunday message I remember a number of years back I was having a um, a situation Sue and I were not seeing eye to eye and a lot of different things and I was struggling with that I'll be honest I was struggling with that and um, I just didn't know what to do but it just seemed over a series of Sundays that and and it's so funny because you know you 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 know our, our pastor you know he teaches pastor um, sheets uh, or Jim sheets when I was going to New Life Christian Fellowship there he would teach, teach topical. That means he would he would you know go verse by verse going down through each chapter, and you know not every every uh, chapter every every verse is talking about marriage, you know it, it doesn't. But yet somewhere along the line, as he was teaching his message, you know he would bring he would bring in marriage, he would bring in a, a relationship of the husband and the wife, and he would do that. And it would it would be like, you know, how 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 is it that he knows that what I'm going through? How is it that I, that he knows that I'm struggling in this? And there were been a couple times that after the service, when everybody was leaving, I would come up to him, and I would tell him, you know, I'm I don't know why you brought up marriage, but I'm going through this situation, and um, he said, you know, that's 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 something that the Lord just put into his spirit. You know, or sometimes out of the blue, you know, we're, we're sharing with the brother and the Lord. Or, you know, and then something prompts you in your spirit. And this has happened to me where, you know, I would I would be at a fellowship um, and um, somebody, something was happening with, with uh, one of the brothers there. 
and the Lord just gave me a word and he just you know and I would be prompted in my spirit to go and share you know it could be a scripture it could be just a word of encouragement it could be anything you know and I would be honestly I'd be afraid I just be thinking oh man this, this is foolish this is silly why would you know but every time I did every time I was faithful in doing that you know the brother would say that's that I, I needed that I needed that I needed that prayer for that that spoke to me so here is the response to that prayer and start in verse 14 then upon Jahaziel the son of Zechariah the son of Benaniah the son of Jehiel the son of Mataniah a Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation all of that is verse 14 so here is giving us credential in in the Jewish there's the genealogy is so important because especially if you're if you're uh, a Cohen if you're you know a Levite if you're uh, in, the, in, in the in the priestly class you know you need to have your your genealogy it shows your credentials it shows who you are you know that you belong that you truly belong in this office so aside from that it could be anybody you know you you see somebody who and, and, and the Lord speaks to your heart and you go over there and you talk to that person and I encourage you to do that because what happened to me not only did I bless that person I was blessed because I realized that the, that the Lord used me to be a blessing isn't that awesome let me continue verse 15 and he said hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And sometimes that's all we need to hear, those three little words, Be not afraid. And it's mentioned all through Scripture. And I encourage you, you know, to, to do a word search, do a word study. Be not afraid. It's all over this. It really is. And that's an encouraging word because God says, I'll take care of this. Let's see, I lost it. Yeah, you know, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 16, tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Again, right here in verse 17, fear not. I mean, you know, that's, that's, as soon as fear takes a hold of your heart, I mean, it's so hard to get rid of. I'm running out of time. Got to hurry here. And Jehoshaphat, verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, the children of the Kohathites, and the children of the Kor, a tight stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And that's something that we need to do as well. We need to praise the Lord. When trial comes, have faith. Have faith. Don't fear. Have faith. And on top of faith, praise God. It's the hardest thing to do. That sacrifice of praise. I believe it's in... in I know it's in the scripture, I can't remember exactly where we talk or at, but that sacrifice of praise is so important it'll help turn things around. Stay tuned for the next part.